Okay. We're going to do composition of functions. And I'm going to be, we have two functions uh, given. Uh, f of x equals x squared plus 2 and g of x equals 3x minus 1. And so we're going to find the composition of f of g of x, as this is called, okay, f of g of x. Now, what does that really mean? Well, it means we take our function f and we put g inside of f. That's what it means, okay? And what, how I do this is I write f of blank without anything in it, plus 2, and I'm going to put g of x in here, okay? Put g of x inside and square it and add 2. Well, what is g of x? g of x is 3x minus 1, right? And there, technically, I found f of g of x, except we don't like to usually look at it this way. We could probably square this and combine like terms, so I'm going to square that and get 9x squared uh, minus 6x, okay, plus, uh, plus 1, plus 2. And my final uh, answer is, well, let me do that a little better. I should bring some erasers with me. 9x squared minus 6x and then uh, plus 3. So we say that f of g of x is 9x squared plus, minus 6x, excuse me, plus 3. It's this quadratic. And we might ask ourselves, well, what's the domain of g of f of x? Well, looking at this, you would say, well, all x. I, you know, that's, that would be a safe, fairly safe bet, but not completely, I can tell you. But we might say that here it is. Here's the domain. And this is going to be true because, look, I can put anything I like in g. g will produce g values when I put various values of x. And this will take anything I like. Neither of these functions have any problems. They don't have any denominators, and they don't have any even roots or anything that would cause us any trouble. So this is the domain. Even though we've done a lot to this function and simplified it down to here, this is the domain of that function. Now that's not always true. For instance, if you have more complicated functions, there might be problems with g. I mean, you might try to put an x in and it won't work. So there might be things that are illegal to put into g. And of the x's that are legal to put into g, it might pr produce uh, func values that are going into f. See, you're producing values here for g that might not fit in g. And those values, then you'd have to work backwards and find out what x's you'd have to eliminate. And it can become a real mess. But I've got a nice way of straightening that out, a nice little trick to help straighten that out. And we're going to look at these functions over here. So if you move the camera over, now I've got f of x equals 1 over x, and g of x equals 1 over x squared uh, plus 2. Okay, so let's take a look at this thing I've got. Gee, in fact, I think I want to change that. If you don't mind, I think I'm going to change that to just x plus 2, make it a little less complicated because I don't want to make things really hard here. But I'm going to look at, so I've changed g of x to 1 over x plus 2, make it a little simpler. And I've got g of f of x here. So I'm going to put um, f of x inside of g. That's what this means. I, I write g out like this. Okay, without the square there. I've gotten rid of that. I write g out, which is 1 over something plus 2. And I'm going to put uh, f of x inside here. Okay. Well, now I'm going to write that again. I'm actually going to literally put it in. I'm going to put in, here's the space plus 2. And f of x is 1 over x. Right? There it is. Okay. Well, we want, might want to simplify that a little bit. So I think I'm going to go ahead and simplify that. What is that? I've got a common denominator on the bottom. And I think I can get 1 over uh, x. Let's see how x is on the bottom. It's going to be 1 plus 2x. And then, of course, we can flip. This is like 1 over 1 over 1 over 2x of x. You flip it over, and you get x over 1 uh, plus 2x. Okay. Now, so g of f in this case is x over 1 plus 2x. And now we go to find the domain. When I look at this, if I look at the result, I might say, well, the only problem I have is I can't put 0 in the denominator, so 1 plus 2x cannot equal 0. I might say, OK, 1 plus 2x cannot equal 0. I might say that and be done with it and say, oh, I'm done with the problem. But that's not quite what happens. We've done a lot of work on this to get from here, really here, down to here. And we might be 
missing something. And the thing that we're missing is this. Look, you're putting F inside of G. F has some problems, okay, with what you can put in, and G has some problems. In other words, I can't put zero in this denominator here, so X has to be greater than zero, right? Not equal. I mean, excuse me, I'm sorry, thank you very much. Student corrected me, not equal to zero. And over here, X plus two can't equal zero. So I've got problems with both of these. So how do I figure out what the domain is? The trick is this. Go back to the place where you put your function inside the function before you began simplifying and multiply. Actually, when you get a common denominator, you multiply two by eight, x over x and all that. Before you start doing all that, take a look at the function and look at that and ask yourself, what is legal to plug in? Okay, first thing you see is you cannot have an x in this, uh, zero. you cannot have zero in this denominator. So x cannot equal zero. In fact, let me get rid of this thing here because I'm, I'm looking at this function right now, which is the same thing. This one's more simplified, but this will tell me what the real domain is. First of all, x cannot equal zero. That's the first thing. The other thing is that this whole quantity can't, can't be zero, so one over x plus two cannot equal zero, can it? Okay, now we can solve this little uh, equality here, or not equal equality, by simply saying one over x uh, cannot equal, can you get this, is it coming out clear enough? I hope you can see this, uh, negative two. And then when we finish solving it, we'll end up with x itself cannot equal negative one half, okay? So we have two restrictions, x cannot equal zero and x cannot equal, that's what this does, I'll make that clear, cannot equal negative one half um, on this function, otherwise it won't work, all right? And uh, we can draw, do the uh, domain in the following way, let me see if I can find it, I'll do it right down here. The domain then equals, or not equals, I'll just put colon, and all the way to negative infinity, okay, all the way to um, uh, negative one half or negative one half all the way to zero, can equal zero, can it? Or, and I'll have to get this out of the way, which doesn't hurt anything, um, zero all the way to positive infinity. And that's just the interval notation way of saying when we have g of f of x, uh, the domain is all reals except x cannot equal zero and x cannot equal negative one half. That's what we're really saying here because we're eliminating negative one half by putting the round bracket there and eliminating zero by putting the round bracket there. But the trick is when you get done simplifying one of these composition of functions and you want to find the domain, Simply go back to the step where you first put one function inside the other and analyze that for domain.